Hi, my name is Rick Eads. I'm a member of the Agilent Digital Standards Program, and I am in charge of the Agilent Program for Digital Standards Computer um, I.O. And as part of that, I serve on the Board of Directors for the PCI SIG. I also participate in, no, in a number of the workshops and work groups that we do to um, support the PCI Express standard as it moves on. So what I'd like to do today is to offer you an update to some of the things that are going on within the PCI SIG as well as within the PCI SIG standard. Uh, we're going and reviewing some of the things we've been doing recently like for PCI Express 3.0. And then we'll uh, get into a little bit of some of the challenges that we've seen as Agilent Technologies for folks that are developing under PC, you know, developing products based on PCI Express, be it 1.0, 2.0, or even uh, more recently 3.0. Certainly the most challenges that we have or that we see right now are our relative to the PCI Express 3.0 standard, so we'll get into that a little bit. And then we'll talk about some of the uh, physical layer test challenges associated with doing development in PCI Express. So the PCI Express standard for PCI Express 3.0 was released um, late last year to the 1.0 standard. And to break that into a little bit of context, what I'd like to describe is just a bit how the PCI Express standard is, um, is organized. The first thing, the first PCI Express standard that was released by the SIG is, re is referred to as the base specification for PCI Express 3.0. Uh, the base specification is a standard that essentially describes the operation of silicon. So if you're doing a chipset or a specialized ASIC or some kind of driver chip uh, where you're really focused on the physical layer, the base spec essentially defines the operation of the PCI Express standard at the pin or the, the ball of the BGA of that device. Now if your job is to integrate silicon onto something else like a system. Say you're doing a graphics card or you're working in a motherboard space and, you want to, and you're trying to utilize a chipset. Then there's another standard that's utilized which is called the card electromechanical specification and it is really a subset of the PCI Express base specification and is intended for what they call the card electromechanical form factor or the chem form factor. Uh, the chem form factor differs from the base spec because the base spec defines operation at the pin of the device, whereas the card electromechanical specification defines operation at the connector. So if you opened up a PCI Express motherboard, for example, and looked inside, what you'd see is a by 16 or by 4 connector. Let's, let's stick with by 16 for now. And uh, the operation of the signaling at that particular connector is where the PCI Express card electromechanical spec is referenced. Now, many of you have probably heard about the PCI SIG workshops that we do. We do upwards of about six of these a year. Four of them are done in Milpitas, California. Two of them are done in uh, Taiwan and Asia Pacific. And the type of testing that we do there is really focused on the card electromechanical specification. So people bring their add-in cards, their root complex devices, their um, endpoint devices, and the PCI SIG will test those devices at the workshops. As those devices pass the standard for uh, the card electromechanical standard that we run against at the workshops, then the vendors are free to um, have their device name actually mentioned on the PCI SIG's web website as part of their integrators list. And if a device passes all of uh, the tests for a given standard, then they can be listed as being compliant with PCI Express 1.0, 2.0, and soon we'll have 3.0. So right now, those compliance programs are well underway for those first two standards, Gen 1 and Gen 2, or PCI Express 1.0 and 2.0. Uh, we're, we're gearing up for getting ready this next year to start testing for the PCI Express 3.0 standard. And probably a lot of you have some questions about, well, when are we going to first start official testing? Well, in order to complete or begin that process, uh, there's one part of the standard that has to be completed, and that's referred to as the test specification. So assuming we release the car electromechanical spec, which should be relatively soon if it hasn't been released already, the next thing you want to look for is the release of the test specification to the 0.9 level. Once that occurs, then um, we can start what's referred to as the FYI period. And the FYI period is a period of time, usually lasts six months, it's about six months long, and begins at the start of a workshop. And 
during that six month period, we wanna have all of the tests, all of the test fixtures, um, all of the processes and procedures in place to go through and test the devices that people bring to the workshops. And we do that for a six month period of time. This allows us to refine the tests, to, have, to, to give exposure to those tests to the PCI SIG membership community. And after that six month period of time, if no significant changes have been made to any of the tests, and we were fairly confident that we've got all of the interoperability predictors that we're looking to isolate, done, then we'll start official FYI testing. So right now, I, my best guess is that six month FYI period will probably start, probably start towards the end of 2011, and official testing for PCI Express 3.0 will probably start in 2012.